Welcome, adventurers. Here's what happened last time on the Incorrigible Party. Discovering the bush hole connects to the underground chamber beneath the tainted lake. The party rains fire and arrows upon the Nyogi inhabitants, liberating the kidnapped pescatarians from their control. However, their efforts appear to be in vain, as the abductees are catatonic, their flesh riddled with eggs that house a new form of Nyogi hatchling. And now, on with the show. So you see that the the passages here, this time around, they have been lit, so nothing here is in complete darkness. As you take a quick right down a, a long stretch of tunnel that leads to a four-way stop. <laughs> mm. Okay. Here you can see to the right, as it kind of narrows in this section, but then opens up to about a 10-foot wide passageway now in these tunnels. To the right here, see it takes a, another curve down, about 20 feet down, and right where it bends around where you would lose sight of it, you see that a fresh hole has been burrowed into the side of the tunnel, and it does look like it leads up, as this section is not lit. It's cast in darkness, right? I think we know where that goes. That's, that's, that should take us right back up to where we were. It's where the one that was mind control probably escaped. When he came to his senses, maybe. I don't know. So, uh, let's head left. But left is never right. Well, three lefts is right. Three lefts is... Okay. <laughs> Math checks out. Oh, to the left, it's a very it's a very quick right turn, uh, followed by another left. That opens up into a, a small chamber, and you see what look like drowned, reanimated people from the black waters. But they seem to be... Again, almost like in this kind of strange catatonic state. Uh, they don't seem to have noticed you at all. They are just slowly stumbling around as if they're they're lost or, or, or confused. And, you know, it's one of them maybe is just kind of doing like slow circles around. You can see that they each are tattooed and embedded into their chests are Niyogi eggs. Ah, oh, more eggs. Oh my goodness! I sorry. I, I was gonna walk up closer to them where they could, I could get a a good view and see if they react to seeing me. Sword drawn. Okay. You get it to about within ten feet of the nearest one, and you see two of them in here are actually they look like they're dressed in cultist garb, perhaps leftover members of the cult of Kralakina from that that succumbs to the Nyogi, their mind control, and then obviously a subsequent death and reanimation. But they do not pay you any uh, mind at all. They, it's almost as if they are unaware of your presence. I look back at everybody and go, do we put them out of their misery? Listen, they're obviously under mind control. Maybe there's a way to kill the eggs without killing the being. But the drowned, I mean... They've probably already been, they're dead and they're reanimated. <sighs> The drown would want to kill us anyway. This is just such a lost cause. I just can't believe they reached the Neogi Ave right now. I just, I just shake my head. I'm not sure there's any saving these people. I, I think we just need to put them out of their misery as swiftly as possible. Can you each roll me perception checks, please? Leland, when a Neogi dies that has mind control, somebody does the tattoo go away? The tattoo does not, because the tattoo is literally a tattoo. It doesn't seem to be any. It's nothing magical. It is literally just a marking as if they're marking their ownership. But you have all learned uh, enough where if uh, the, the controlling Niyogi dies, the entities that they are controlling are no longer controlled. But again, the drowned would be aggressive anyway. and then So they're catatonic so the either because they're still being controlled by another Niyogi that's somewhere nearby or there's something else affecting them. And it could be the eggs. Possibly. I'll take some checks after your perception checks. 12. 25. 18. Uh, 6 for Falzern. Okay, so Falzern may be a little preoccupied, uh, but the rest of you, 
in amidst their shambling of these these what are, look like there's six figures in here, two of which are, are in cultist garbs. The the eggs so they, they've they've changed. They're very clearly uh, still there's still that 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 absorption of the black slime inside of them. There's, there's swirls of black in now what looks like almost a translucent shell, and you can clearly see a fully formed uh, hatchling larva. The 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 transformed or changed Niyogi hatchling inside of them, moving around and, and active inside of them. Does it look like it's crossed with the tool? It still is. That's yeah. It still has that that shelled body on tentacle legs with the eagle neck. I'm going to take my bronze scaled scimitar and slice across the eggs on the chest of the one closest to me. Like slice up to cut mm-hmm. them in half. Well, they're just... sticking out. As you close within five feet, can you make me a constitution saving throw as the eggs burst open? Oh, wonderful. Flinging these larvae towards you. Uh, 13. That is just a fail. So you take five poison damage, and the changed Niyogi hatchlings, these are like sm- almost smaller than tiny creatures, embed themselves into your flesh shaft. <laughs> what? Like they're burrowing in, or oh, they're just no. like attached like a tick. They're burrowing in. Okay, how many are burrowing in to me? You can roll me a d6. <laughs> can I roll you a d4? <laughs> this is better than rolling it. Well, shit. Better five. than rolling a d10. Five of these transformed Niyogi hatchlings are now burrowing Frick. their way in into your body. What happened to the person they were in before? The drowned. All eggs now burst empty on its chest. It still continues to just saunter around unaffected. Hmm. Are we in initiative right now? We're not in an in initiative. Uh, we can we can take an initiative if, if that's easier for uh, what we're going to do, but we don't necessarily need to do that. I'd like to act well, yeah, um, I was gonna say swiftly. Something. I was going to say, I'm going to pu- run, sort of turn around and sort of stumble back towards everybody else and go, get him off of me! And start trying to take my dagger and try to start scraping uh, the best I can to, to try to poke him. You know, pimple pop him. So as you do that, <laughs> I'm like, let's go. Let's get out of here before we're all infested. And we, like, let's all just sort of, like, hopefully in Mia's mind, like, run and we'll we'll pull them off him later when there's only five versus all of us having them. Falzern thinks that time is of the essence, and uh, I want to try and get the help get these off of Shaft as quickly as possible. Without I want us to start I mean, running, you, so it's up to, fall, folks to Shaft, I guess. Can retreat a bit if you want, but I'm not going to leave Shaft. I'll move with you to get around the corner away, away from the. I want to go room. like there at least. Falzern, burn them. We will deal with Shaft. Okay, that's all I need to hear. I'm going to uh, cast Fireball into the room. Okay, and like in the, the the other set of caves that you had inspected before all, all of this has happened here, they just go up in flames. Again, they're, they do not try to even avoid the damage. They're roasted. You, you know, the eggs boil and pop now, dead larvae f- falling out of charred bodies as the what's in that room is, is killed. I start uh, helping pick pick the eggs off of shaft so, yeah i'm gonna take my dagger and 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 yeah stick it into wherever these things are hoping to to grab them and pop them out slice them why don't you why don't you make me an attack roll against yourself <laughs> <laughs> now is this an instance where you want to roll a high attack roll or a low attack roll well if you critical fail something's coming off <laughs> <laughs> Third leg, web toes. Uh, twenty-one to hit. Yeah, you you stab into one of them and, and pull it out of your body before it can get all the way inside of you. The rest of you each can have a ch- uh, Shakara and Mia will have a chance to get another one before they're fully embedded under his yes, skin. Yes, I would like to. Yeah, I'll pull out my dagger. Okay. That's a twelve to attack. Twelve is not gonna do it. Seven plus nineteen. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You do get a second one here. So three of these larvae now fully embed themselves into shaft, and w- around where they're embedding, or they they've embed themselves, 
there's kind of like like green veins radiate out across Shaft's skin. And you take another, you take nine poison damage. Okay. I will lay on hands and spend five points of my healing power to uh, neutralize a poison. Perfect. And as you make contact with Shaft, you see the, those, those veins kind of start to recede and the larvae shrivel up and almost like in reverse pulled out of Shaft's body and they're, they're, they're shriveled and curled and they fall dead to the cave floor. Uh, I sort of wipe my wounds, take, you know, try to cover up and I, well, don't get close to them. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta go. Did you finish him, Falzer? Yes, the, I don't believe there's going to be any survivors in that room. Shaft, are, are you okay? Thanks, they, they, that didn't feel good at all. Yeah, do you guys, uh, dare I say, need healing? I, I am all right at the I'm, moment, Mia. I'm hurt, but I'm no, I'm okay. Okay, you let me know, Shaft. Thanks, Ed. These things. Ugh. I could use some healing if you're offering. Can't you touch yourself? I have used all of my pool. Okay. Come over here, Shikara. I'll uh, I'll cast first level cure wounds on Shikara. Ooh, wee, nine points. Is that better? Is that enough? Yes. Well, good enough. I'm, I'm at 59 of 88, yeah, I'm so. at 48. You're fine. Where to now? Shaft, lead the way. You've never steered us wrong. <laughs> I've steered myself wrong, apparently. I head down this way a little, uh, to the passageway to the east, um, across from where we came to the four-way stop. Okay, uh, another about 40 feet of straight passage to a right turn, followed by a quick left. And here is where basically where the this torch light ends. There are no, in, in, you know, you take this last left here, and for the limit of all of your dark visions, it looks like just a straight tunnel continues down, uh, unlit. Okay, I guess this is it. Let's go back. Let's go try one of the other tunnels where it doesn't get so dark. Sure, I agree. These eggs are scary. Yes, I, I, we could always come back to this, but perhaps there are other tunnels that are more well lit. I think I'd like to make our way back to the main room again, uh, following our, our tunnel back, and then head back out to the northwest. The tunnel which we went down uh, um, a while ago uh, when we were here last time. So we sort of know the, the pathway a little bit, so I'd like to track back to our uh, the room where we had our, where Bren met her doom. Sorry, Mia shouldn't be wincing at that. I'm just, it's fresh. It's fresh wound, guys. Yes, you are, again, three quarters of you are familiar with this passage of tunnel, the, you know, the way it curves, basically kind of goes up, over, and then back down even further, making this kind of rectangular shape. Uh, until it begins to curve, where you meet a fork, uh, where you go into this, where, you know, the double chambered area where you had had your fight with Brendel, and then another continuing tunnel. And uh, to the one that continues, again, you see that it, it continues for about 30 or 40 feet, and then, again, the torches end uh, of a, and as, as the tunnel continues to, to stretch uh, ahead of you. The uh, room south of us uh, where we had the battle once before. Does anything look different or is it similar to when we last saw it? So you can hear clearly the same shuffling from the drowned, the infested drowned that you had just encountered into this room where uh, many of, there's still charred remains from the fire that Shakara had set with her breath weapon during that fight. But again, there are what looks like two more of uh, cultists, drowned ch- cultists, reanimated with the black ooze, infested with these this new version of the Niogi. Hey, Falzerin, how many fireballs can you cast in a day? Well, I, I am quickly becoming uh, tired. My, my magical resources are, are not bottomless, as you know, but uh, I could perhaps... I do have other spells that, that are much less taxing 
that I could use. Okay, we gotta burn these. Will they do as much damage? Will they take out this many? They do not do as much damage, but I can attack them from a distance. Look at how many there are. How many are there, Leland? Well, s- some of those in there are charred remains that are, again, old remains from the p- previous fight here. Up and walking around, there looks like there are only the two cultists. Which, again, we don't need to go into any type of roles or uh, easily done. Again, they seem, don't seem to mind your presence at all. They're not reacting to nearly anything. So any types of ranged artillery that or attacks you want to have, you can easily put them down. That's not going to be a problem. We don't need to waste time rolling on that stuff. Again, you now know to keep your distance from them, so you know how to deal with these things. Yeah, I would just be keep as far away as I as I could be and just hurl fire bolts at Perfect. them. Perfect. So just use uh, That's easy. Absolutely easy. I throw a hammer or two at a Neogi egg. You know. Once those have all been uh, dispatched, I think we'll move on down the pathway here into where the darkness uh, is. Is this like? You're just saying it's darkness, like we can only see, we see as far as our, our uh, dark vision can see, but it's not like a magical darkness or anything, right? No, it's okay. not. It's just unlit. That's it's as simple gotcha. as that. Okay. Then I'll just continue down this this way. Falzerin, um, as he's leaving this room, sort of pauses for a moment, looks into this chamber, and, and a, a bit of sadness overtakes him. He sighs pauses and then moves on down this dark tunnel then yes we'll, we'll continue on uh trying to be relatively quiet and lis- listening trying if you'd all oh like to roll gosh. me some stealth checks it's not gonna matter for me because don't want to be turning so well. a corner and getting a bunch of stuff stuck inside of me 19 that's what she's 16 <laughs> 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 So now is my turn to roll the one. I got a three total. Uh, I got three as well. I rolled a one as well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we need to oil our armor, dang it. Yeah, right. About 10 or 15 minutes you're walking down this tunnel. And despite the noise that Shakara and Mia are making, it doesn't seem like it's drawing any attention. You're not hitting any, you're not meeting any resistance down this tunnel, and it doesn't look like there are, uh, from what you traverse, there are any branching tunnels off of uh, the pathway that you're you're walking down. Do you want to con- keep going? Yes. No turning back now, guys. Yeah, we have, we, we turned around last time. So you're traveling for, I mean, is there an amount of time where you would I'd say stop? about 15 we... minutes. I figure we, I think we have like six and a half days before Samuel arrives. So. I mean, we're not going to spend the day down here, but 15 Less minutes. than that. <laughs> yeah. like 15 <laughs> minutes falls in that criteria. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and again, for another 15 minutes, this, this this tunnel just continues to go on. It does seem like it is rising in elevation. Do we have any idea where we are in relation to yeah, the that's above what I was gonna world? Say. Does it feel like we would be moving back towards Pisces? Would this be just tunnel leading? You can each roll me a survival check. All right. Let's hope we're going the right direction. Oh, with a plus nine, I have 11? Are you freaking kidding me? 14. 23. 11. Uh, five for yeah. Falzern. It's pretty clear to both Shaft and Shakara that this tunnel is leading up. Uh, most likely going to go somewhere to the surface. Uh, Shakara, you do kind of get the sense based on the direction in which the tunnel from the, the bush tunnel that you took down, right? And uh, it does feel like you're moving back towards the city of Pisces. Hmm. I think we're headed toward Pisces. Great. That's, uh... That may mean then Yogi. The wrong that's way. not Pisces. good. Um, uh, at the elevation we're climbing, will we be at the surface soon or like... That, unfortunately, you, you, you couldn't possibly tell. Dang it, what do yeah, we do? Yeah, this thing could go on for miles. Maybe we, uh, I don't know if we have time Where's for Where's the bush tunnel, you guys? Come on. I thought you'd been here before. Now, this is farther than we've ever went. You've seen everything we saw last time we were here. Okay, fair enough. I I, I think we turn back and, and try another forking path. So let's turn around. We'll go all the way back to the main room where we started 
And there was one final pathway that we haven't went down to the west. There is, yes. And I think we'd like to, I'm going to head down that is way. Is that where they dragged the villagers, that one? No, that isn't the one that they dragged the villagers. Which one did they drag the villagers? Just curious. The first one that you investigated. Okay. That's the drown we killed then, I guess. So this tunnel quickly does a, a bit of a, a, a curve into another straightaway, deviating from that straight uh, path, uh, course, a, a little bit. As you're walking for another 100 or so feet, maybe 200 feet, where you do hit uh, a fork. One that you would con- can continue moving forward uh, and again, t- uh, branching path to the right. Here the tunnel's about still that 10 feet wide kind of tunnel, right? This, another section you've hit that would continue down and is unlit. Could I um, listen very intently and perhaps smell the air? Please. Uh, <laughs> perception check would be fantastic. I fart a little bit so he can You notice his smell. nose is perked up. <laughs> That's right. Just for a control. control. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thanks. That's very helpful. Here to help. So it's an adjusted 20. You don't hear anything, uh, but you do smell rotten eggs <laughs> from Shaft's fart. <gasps> Sorry. And Were you eating the you do get You do get a waft of rotting fish or rotting rotting seafood coming from the path that you would move straight down towards okay which is lit i i can't hear anything i I smell two different things that smell foul one i think is from the pathway straight ahead it smells sort of like decomposing sea creatures i don't smell anything coming from the right what should we do? Let's head down the, the pathway to the, the south. Well, s- straight ahead, right? Okay, so make a right. right. Which way is the light coming from? Straight ahead. Straight ahead, yeah. Okay, straight ahead. Straight ahead is, is lit and I smells say, like rotten fish. I say we go the rotten fish way. Okay. I plod off after them. So are we? do we have two different ways we want to go? I'm sorry. No, I thought we were all... straight is the rotten fish, but you kept saying you we're wanted to go the, south. We're following the lit path. Right, I, I misunderstood. Okay. Yeah, let's, let's go down this way and head down the straight path. Approaching the end of this tunnel, you're all hit with, with the wave of, of rotting seafood, rotting rotting fish. It smells putrid. Clearly have been rotting for a, a number of days, if not weeks. It's not the hag that's with us? <laughs> not the hag that's hey. with you, no. I'm not rotting. She's, she's still fresh. Like tuna. It's- Stinky. You hit a you hit a quick left, uh, another twenty feet that opens up to a, a large, oval shaped chamber. Immediately as you walk in, you see three large trunks that kind of run along uh, the the wall to your left. In this chamber, in the middle of the room is is a large barrel. It looks similar to a barrel that Danzig once was housed in. In addition, there is a you know, a kind of a what looks like a workbench. There seem to be a few, you know, artisan's tools, uh, maybe a, a bits and pieces of spell components over there. There's a mortar and pestle sitting on top of it, unused. Seems like everything in here has collected a fair amount of dust as well. And on the wall, which would be to your immediate right as you're uh, at the threshold of this chamber, is set into the stone is a wooden frame with six pointed stars carved into it. Ericus place. Huh? Mm. You see the the barrel is completely covered in petals. These long, skinny, purple, pink petals. I don't have a good feeling about this. These look like the petals that may have been in Danzig's barrel. Yeah, the snow bloom. Yes, uh, I have a feeling there's something lying beneath the surface What's of in this these barrel. containers? That must be what stinks. How tall is the barrel? I uh, say so it was about three feet. Uh, it's quite wide, though. It's about, you know, it takes up about a, a 10 by 10 space. Do we dare open it? Oh, okay. So it's very large, yes. Is it closed? Is it covered or is the it The petals just... seem to be floating on the surface of the water. There is enough of them that it does obscure what would be below it. I would like to uh, approach it, uh, although keeping as much distance as possible and use the uh, bottom of my staff. I'm going to hold it from the top and uh, try and... Uh, brush some of the petals aside to see if I can get any glimpse. Sure. 
I Does Alamar go? Oh, you're not using Alamar's cane, surely. No, my staff is uh, my quarter staff is is longer than Falzern's cane uh, than Alamar's cane. As you approach, it's clear this is the source of the smell, and you push aside some of the petals, revealing. You know, it's like uh, this kind of liquefaction of the water, and there's just dead and rotting squids, like dozens of squids that have just died in this barrel unattended and have now started to, to rot. And, and they're, you know, congealing bodily fluids as, as they deteriorate. Maybe this is where Danzig was before the boat? Like post ritual? Let's look at the workbench. Yeah. Maybe there's something, some signs, some keys. Yes. Good call. It, it's it seems as whatever sort of magic or potion or effects were being done to this barrel have have long since stopped and death has set Shikara, in. Shakara, do you know how to use these portals that Erica uses? I was just gonna say I'm gonna walk over to the portal and see if I can feel anything or sense anything from it. Yeah, give me a, an Arcana check uh, with advantage. Fourteen. You kind of inspecting. I imagine you maybe run your hands along the the frame, kind of thing, and you don't feel anything from it. It just feels like an inert piece of wood. Uh, Shaft and Falzerin, could you both roll me a history check, please? Uh, Twenty-four for Falzerin. Four. Bill's rolling really high today. Falzerin, you immediately recognize this portal. This obviously it has similarities to the one that Shakara has access to and that Isabella has created. But you've seen a portal like this specifically with the six-pointed star and carved into it in Erica's Coral Urn. At the time, in Erica's, the star was glowing with a purple pinky light. This one is not glowing. There's, there's again, there's it looks like a simple carving in, in an inert piece of wood. Uh, Shakara, I believe I know who this portal would have belonged to. It, it looks very similar to one uh, that I have seen in Erica's lair. Yes, that makes sense. It feels dead. Without knowing its activation word, I do not believe we can use it. Yes, and I, I'm not. Unless it had multiple destinations, it would lead to. Uh, I don't think we would want to travel to where it would lead, which is the last place that I saw one similar to this. What if there's one in Drew Call? Let's look for the password on the workbench. Maybe she wrote it down. Yeah, I'm gonna look. I would like to investigate the workbench. Knowing Isabella the way I do, I assume Erica would not write anything down. Okay, just. Yeah, I just want to look at the workbench and see if there's anything um, interesting on it. Again, there is a, a, a mortar or pestle here. It's simply made of stone. Uh, everything here, again, co covered in dust. It looks like it's been unattended for, for a number of days, at least. And there's bits of what look like petal pulp in the bottom of this mortar pestle. You see the, the, the pestle is the stick, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. The pestle is like stained that with that purple color, the same color as, as these, these flower petals. Other than that, there are some uh, basic ingredients uh, for, for you know spells that Falzer may be interested in collecting. And Shaft, you find the ceremonial dagger that you were handed from Danzig, stabbing the final sacrifice to raise Kralakina. I'll take the dagger. Maybe the password's Kralakina? Kralakina, Kralakina, Kralakina! What's in those trunks? I want to check out what's in this first trunk on the left. Mia just keeps saying Kralakina because she thinks we the password. <laughs> <laughs> well, nothing, nothing happens when you shout Kralakina repeatedly. Okay. You gotta say but it 73 trying. times. <laughs> yeah, keep trying. You, you, something might change. <laughs> Erica didn't want to make it easy on anybody, even herself. <laughs> Erica is the best. Isabella is the worst. No? I'm just going to keep trying. Shakar, the first trunk holds thick, fur-lined 
black robes that are clearly made for a, a colder climate. Uh, with dirty black robes, the, they're, they're stained with red and black blotches uh, as well. Just basic clothing here. These would burn, no? We could place them over the bodies and set the whole thing on fire. Check the pockets first. What if there's a key the for the door? First. There's see, no, uh, no, nothing in any of the pockets on these, the, the winter clothes. Dang it. I'll pull a few of the cloaks out and set them by the entrance to the cave, and then I'll check the second chest. Checking the second chest is, is more uh, robes and, and linens, basically. Go on to the third chest. In the third, it seems there's a, a, an assortment of, you know, mundane equipment. There are some pythons and, and rope. Uh, a few of the items in here, though, seem to resonate with, with a, a type of magic. Falls are in. Yes. Come look at these, please. So I'll come over and and take a look at what Shakar has discovered. I can detect magic, but if you would like to detect magic, but I we know it's magical. It just tells me the type. Whereas Falzarin can investigate and know the use and stuff like that, right? So yeah, right, I'll just right. leave it to Falzarin. So. Sh- Shakara, you've you've found what looks like an eye patch, and on it is has this kind of crudely drawn symbol of an eye. You find a set of daggers. They look like they are a pair that belong together. They're curved, and they're forged of this dark gray, what looks like steel. Each have a, a rounded pommel on the end of their their handles one of which has the silhouette of a cat carved into it, and the other it has a more of a, a stylized eye, much more fanciful than what's depicted on, on the uh, eye patch. Other than the symbols, though, the daggers are identical. In amidst a number of bedrolls in this chest, uh, one of them kind of stands out again. It's this pristine white linen. There isn't a speck of dirt or grime on it, whereas you know the rest of the clothing you found in here have clearly been used they're worn, they're, they're soiled, but this looks pristine. What, what type of uh, garment was it? The blanket. Are you pulling these items out or are you just moving things around? Yeah, I see. I'll pull the, uh, the eye patch. I'll just move around. The daggers I'll pull out and put in my uh, belt. And then the bedrolls I'll pull out and put on the ground. And the blanket I'll put on top of the other bedrolls. Okay. Now you've uncovered more things at the bottom of this chest here. There's a large metal six-pointed star on the end of a, about a, it looks like about a three-foot pole. Again, made of, made of metal. And at the end of the pole there, it looks like there's a, a button. And this star is about a, like a foot in diameter. Six points. I look over at what she's pulling out of the thing there and go, Hey, that thing probably opens the dam. The dam? Hot dam. Yeah, that's what's holding all the water back. <laughs> we must take this with us and give it to the pescatarians. Yeah, but wouldn't releasing the water spread the black ooze if it's not fixed? Even more? We can give it to them to decide. That's fine. Once they can clear the ooze, then they can release the water. The, the water flows back to Port Randis, correct? Yep. If we open the dam up. The water will flow back to right. Port Randis, which is just has a trickle that's going there. They used to rely on that water. Yeah, well, it's not like it's usable right now. No, but, you know, Campbell's got that covered. It's just a matter of time. Yes, once they clean it up, they can release the water again. Wow, I don't know. Like, did you not just see what I just saw in here? This is... It's not going to be anytime soon, but yeah, like, let's give the key to the right people, I guess. Is it on the way to Drukal? Not really. We can give it to the pescatarians that are at the lake. Yeah, they can take it back and give it to Campbell. He can decide what to do. Yes. There are two more things left in this trunk. Kind of in the bottom corner of it, the, it looks like there's, again, it kind of looks like it's fabric, but it's it's clearly folded up and there's layers to it. And it is like a deep, like shadowy black. Other than that, there's doesn't seem to be any any features. It's just like looking at, it's like looking at magical darkness. 
And finally, there looks like there's a broom at the bottom of this chest. Its handle is nearly four feet long. It looks like it's made from a very lightly colored wood. At the top end of the handle, there's a, a red rectangle, like painted into it, with a, a white cross that extends to each edge of this shape. The vertical line of the cross seems to be shifted to the left, so it's, it's off-center. And at the end of the handle where the bundle of straw is lashed to it to form the bristles, you notice that there is an inscription. It reads, Denny, the Denish broom of flying. <laughs> I'm liking where this is going. Shakara, maybe you need a broom to finish off your new outfit. I just look at me. Joking, Shakara. You're not that old, I know. Falzarin, this does say flying on it. And I'll hand him the broom. So I, I turn it over and sort of examine it. And my goodness, if this, if this can allow the user to fly, something I've dreamed of. As you're handling it. And I don't know if you're saying this more to yourself <laughs> or yeah, projecting sort of it. thinking out loud, right? But as you as you're you know you're turning it over and you're looking at maybe you ru- you know run a thumb over the inscription. The broom moves in your hands. The handle bends as if reacting to your touch, and it kind of you know maybe you, you know you let go of it and on it floats there in front of you standing perpendicular to the to the ground and the head of its handle where the you know the rectangle which is the danish flag for those who don't know <laughs> almost as if it's like this face peering at you it kind of again the 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 handle is less of a wood now it's more uh, uh, flexible than that and amorphous and it just bends as if like nodding a head to you falls in my goodness what a fascinating thing I've never seen anything like it. I, I, I'm pleased to meet you. I'm Falzarin. You see it it bows again and it moves to kind of put the inscription in front of you where it reads Denny. Denny, yes, yes. Denny, it's, it's an honor. I, I would love for you to come along with me if you're willing. It kind of shudders and like shakes. It's bristles kind of moving in excitement and it zips around below you to your, you know, back of your knees, kind of kick you out and catches you on its handle and starts to fly around the room with you on it. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness, this is, this is You're incredible. You're seeker, falls are in. <laughs> I don't know what that accent is. Okay. Shikara chuckles. <laughs> <laughs> Falzer, do any of these items seem like dangerously magical? Because that black thing is like freaking me out, but also like cool. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. I'm flying. <laughs> <laughs> Whee! Magical and, and deafness. Denny picks up. Denny picks up speed around the, the, the you know above the, everyone's heads and starts going faster two, and faster. Like, this is gonna get old. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. I'll I'll try and sort of um, guide Denny, oh, Denny back does not down need to guiding. Earth. <laughs> <laughs> Denny, yeah, yeah. So you, I, you're kind of tugging at it, almost like trying to control reins on a horse. Denny doesn't really respond right away. It does a couple more laps before it starts to slow okay. and takes you down to the back to to the solid ground. Whoa, boy, that is that is impressive, Denny. But but maybe. Maybe some more later. Oh, I think we have a bit of business to attend to first. So I, I will, um, I will offer my services to if anyone is interested in having me identify anything. Uh, Shakara, there seems to be quite a few items here we've, we've looked at. You, are there any you'd like me to spend some time studying, or, or shall we wait? Yes, please look at these, and I'll give them the eye patch, the daggers, and the white linen. Okay. And then while he's doing that, I want to look at the, the darkness. Look deep into the darkness. So um, I guess I can ritual cast identify. That's uh, what we were hoping you'd do. 
What do you want to identify? Falls are. Um, the daggers first, I suppose. Uh, remind me, there was one that uh, had a silhouette of an eye and one had a silhouette of a cat. That's right. Okay. Uh, let's do the cat first. For all those cat people out there. <laughs> for all you cat lovers out there. Come at you Looking with at the you, Blade of the Arch Arc Rogue. These twin Blade daggers. Of the arc Rogue? Uh, yeah, the Arch Arch Rogue. These twin daggers once belonged to a daring thief who used arcane magic to aid him in his escapades. So they have a, a couple of effects. They do require a uh, attunement. You can attune to looks like either of the daggers, so if you wanted you would need to attune to both of them individually. If you're attuned to only one of the daggers, you gain the benefits listed below, depending on the dagger of which you are attuned to. So you don't have to use them as a pair, despite them being identical. Properties of the blade of the cat, which is obviously the dagger with the, the cat on it. You would gain a plus three bonus to attack and damage rolls made with this weapon. You get advantage on dexterity checks. And you take no damage from falling 20 feet or less if you are not incapacitated. If you're attuned to the Blade of the Eye, the dagger it can count as an arcane focus for the purposes of casting spells. While holding the weapon, you gain plus 3 bonus to spell attack rolls. The dagger has 10 charges. It regains 1d6 plus 2 charges daily at dawn. While holding it, you can use an action to expend one or more of the dagger's charges to cast one of the following spells from it using your spell save DC. Disguise Self takes one charge. Expeditious Retreat takes one charge. Invisibility takes two charges. What? Knock would take two charges. Haste takes three charges. And Mislead takes five charges. I, I need know, to know mislead. what all of those spells are immediately. That's a freaking good dagger, man. The beginner in me has nice. no clue. I don't know what mislead is. Though. Let me look that up. If you are attuned to both daggers, you get properties of the blade of the arch robe. When casting a spell with the range of touch, you can choose to make a melee attack roll with one of the daggers instead of making a spell attack roll, which isn't so useful for like a spell caster, but could be useful uh, for like shaft or something. On a hit, the spell activates as normal and you roll additional damage based on the dagger that was used to deliver the spell. This counts as an attack for the purposes of dealing sneak attack damage. Oh, frick. So you get a little little bonus a for being attuned to, to both of them, but either or can give the wielder a benefit. Oh, dang. Mia's gonna be super interested in hearing that, but like try to front like she doesn't need that, you know, like she's powerful enough, but like really wants them. I don't need them, but whoever gets them is going to be a lucky son of a gun. I've got enough of my own magical stuff that I would think I would be just being greedy to want them, but... Oh, yeah. I don't have enough attunement slots. It's like something where you'll have to just be rotating attunements, like, before you go to bed or something. <laughs> right. Yeah. That, I you mean, the Blade of the Eye is really good. It's a good problem to yeah, have, Yeah, dude, mislead. Folks. Do you want me to... Me read sure. mislead. Yeah. You become invisible at the same time as an illusory double of you appears in your same location. So it's concentration up to an hour. Uh, double lasts for the duration. Invisibility ends if you attack or cast a spell. You can use your action to move your illusory double up to twice your speed, make it gesture, speak, behave in whatever way you choose. You can see through its eyes and hear through its ears. Uh, as a bonus action on your turn, you can switch from using its senses to using your own or back again. Uh, while using its senses, you can't use your own senses, so you're blind and deaf, basically, with your actual character. But that's dope. It's invisible plus That'd an been illusion. Really good for Bryn. Rip. Right. <laughs> yeah. This would have been great for Bryn. Yeah. <laughs> what a funny how that works out. <laughs> I mean, I think with getting a plus three to your spell attacks, it really should be Falzerns. Can I stack that with my cap of casting? Yeah. You do have to be holding the dagger, though, so it would, for the intents and purposes, become your arcane focus. Yeah, like, I'm not going to want to give up my hammer or my shields to hold a dagger, so... I, I'd suggest you hang on to it. If you don't want it, the rest of it's pretty cool for Shaft, too, so... Yeah, that's the trouble, right? Like, it's it's uh, versatile, basically. It is. It's not just 
for spellcasters. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I'll tell the group uh, basically what Leland just told us about them all. So, um, what haven't I identified yet? I'm... The eye patch. The eye patch. And the pristine white linen blanket. Let's do the blanket. I am intrigued by that. I'm also very intrigued by this this depths of blackness and darkness. Dude, we haven't touched that yet. We're getting Yeah, I'm there. a bit nervous to touch it, if I'm being honest. I want to touch it. <laughs> So you want the... All you. Okay, so you will have to pick it up and handle it to, to identify. Well, I'll, I'll start with the, the white one. It doesn't seem to be dangerous okay. so, as of yet. <laughs> this is a blanket of blending. It stretches at about... A, it's a, like an eight-foot long blanket made of a very unique magical fiber that seems to adapt to its surroundings. As a free action, you can cover yourself with the blanket and blend into your surroundings. When the command word is spoken, the blanket changes to mimic not only the color, but the shape of the nearby terrain. Examples might include a boulder, a bush, or a small hill. Any creature attempting to locate the hidden creature must succeed on a DC 18 wisdom perception check. That's very wow. cool. That's, okay. that's big okay. Harry Potter vibes right there. I like it. It's uh, Lord of the Rings when he was down going into the uh, yeah when the Mordor that does require attunement. Ah, oh, damn! Frick! It does it require Frickin one blankets. ring to rule them all? <laughs> uh, okay, cool. Um, I will reluctantly touch this ominous looking. We haven't done the eye patch oh, yet. Oh, right, yes, eye patch. If you want to put it off a little longer. <laughs> Okay, uh, uh, next I'll identify this eye patch. Do you have a thing against eyes, Holzer? The eye patch. Depends how they look at me. Whoever wears this eye patch gains an ad- uh, gains advantage on all perception checks, and it would give you a dark vision of, of 30 feet if you didn't already have it. If they previously had dark vision, it extends their dark vision an additional 30 feet. As you're handling it, the, the inside of the patch kind of swirls with this, this like a, almost looks like a, a starry sky, this kind of cosmic scenery just moving uh, at the back of this eye patch. If you were to wear the eye patch for a week, the eye depicted on the front of it would start to move on its own. Meaning man eye moony? The let's let's take a look at this darkness of darkness. Did the eye patch require attunement? It does not. <gasps> Shaft with a moving eye patch. Let's go. Because <laughs> I have the goggles already. True. So. Could maybe save it for Grimby if you ever meet back up with him. Yeah, he could use an eye patch. Does for he sure. want a moving eye? But he's he not could... a pirate. <laughs> no, yeah, he true. Is. he's not a pirate. <laughs> not with an attitude like that, Who's he's not. to say? After an, an additional 10 minutes. You see that this this folded piece of, of, of darkness is a portable pit. You can use an action to unfold the portable pit and place it against a solid surface. Would most likely be a floor or the ground. Whereupon, the portable pit creates an extra dimensional pit. It's ten feet deep with spikes in the bottom. Additionally, the pit magically <laughs> conceals itself, creating an illusory surface that is virtually identical to the surface it was placed upon. A successful DC 15 perception check is required to notice a slight shimmering in the in the illusory surface of the pit. And a successful DC 15 investigation check reveals the shimmering edge, and at which point the person looking for it could f- find it, roll it up, and take it. Interesting. Interesting. Wish we would have got this stuff a long I time ago. Used <laughs> in right? A very dastardly way. So while he was uh, investigating all that and taking 40 minutes, could we have taken a short rest? Short rest is an hour. So you could start one if you well, want to decide you're here for off. an hour. I think that was it, right? Unless you wanted to... Yeah. If you want to try to identify the, the, the star with the, the pole, um, it doesn't seem to be giving off any type of magic, but you never know. And if you wanted to identify Denny and get the deets on that, you also could do that. Yeah, why don't... Why don't we uh, see what Denny's got up his wooden sleeves? I would like a short rest. I mean, I'll take it. It, it seems relatively safe here. If everything has had uh, is dust all over it, it doesn't look like anything's been down this way. 
Yeah. So I'll roll, I'll roll some hit die, if you'll allow me. So this is a broom of flying, though this broom seems to be sentient. It does seem to have a, a bit of a personality, as you have witnessed. So it has a flying speed of 50 feet. It can carry up to 400 pounds, uh, but its flying speed becomes 30 while carrying over 200 pounds. Now, a normal broom of flying, you could direct it and send it off to a specific destination within one mile of you, a place that you would have to be familiar with. And speaking a command word would allow the broom to return to you as long as it was still within one mile. Now, again, how that would work with Denny specifically yet to be seen, but you do learn the command word and can try to use it uh, at your leisure. You can add to your collection of talking inanimate or, or alive inanimate objects. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's, it's no, quite, we haven't heard from it's quite a little a entourage that I'm uh, building up here. <laughs> <laughs> One mile range if it's scouting, and it will always do exactly what I ask it to do <laughs> under any circumstances. <laughs> Pretty sure you said that. Well, always. you know, with, with Denny, that one mile range may or may not be extended or shortened. You got a short broom, Falzer? Oh, it's all right. I know how to use it. That's all that matters. See you. <laughs> <laughs> well, what happens now? Uh, have we we haven't searched all of the chests, have we? Just one. Nope. Shakara did thoroughly go through all of them. You see, she's you know she's bundled a, a, a large pile of dry linens and, and and you know rope like winter winter clothing. Yeah, I'll, I'll help Shakara. Are there any flowers that are? Uh intact or are they are just petals it does not look like there are any uh, intact flowers just what was in the water and what was in the the remnants of the paste in the in the mortar so uh, falzern didn't spend a great deal of time studying that workbench and the mortar and pestle and all that sort of thing could i take a bit of a closer look and make sure there's nothing that we're missing there that i might find um uh you know useful information or or perhaps Something that might stand out as interesting to Falzern. Yes, absolutely. You wanna you can finish up the short rest here and make me an arcana check. I'm also kind of interested in if I might be able to discern what could have been being crafted with the modern pestle. Snowbloom. Right, but like what what ultimately would have been. You know, are there other ingredients that were being combined with the snowbloom or? Uh, unfortunately, Falzerin is feeling a bit spent after identifying all of those items. So he has a, a 10 for an arcana check. From what you can tell, um, it's un you're unclear as to what exactly the outcome, the intended outcome here was. But it does, uh, as you maybe uh, posited, that things were, ingredients were being combined with like the ground up petals. Now some okay. some of those solutions and those those combinations are on the on the desk here, but they they seem inert and basically a paste. So as if whatever was attempted here, uh, whatever use they were trying to adapt the snow blooms to was a failure. Okay, I would like to reach down and uh, whatever uh, little pile of of paste looks most interesting, put it on the tip of my finger and taste it. Oh, wow. Roll me a constitution saving throw, please. You are Perfect. not booch. You are faltering. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get high. Let's get high. Uh, 11. <laughs> oh, crap. <laughs> Tastes like nothing. And you die. <laughs> oh, crap. You take, you take 12 oh. poison damage. <laughs> oh, no. Serge, you're not even going to short rest, son. <laughs> You're supposed Falzern, to use your nose, not your you tongue. And you are poisoned for one minute. Oh, perfect. <laughs> Great. So you continue to take damage, Falzerin. Do you need how healing? Do, how does Falzerin look? Uh, he's hurting a little bit after that. Okay, let's give you the full minute before Mia commits spells. 
Let's wait and see if he dies first. Yeah, <laughs> Before take we his, waste any take his goods. <laughs> so Falzern sort of reels back and instantly regrets tasting. Mumbles to himself, "This isn't this isn't the first time that I I should have learned that you don't taste half-made potions. You you smell them at best." Yes, that was quite stupid. Well, Falzern, it, it, what's gotten into you? Yes, I. I just, I wanted to know more but what was going on here. So the, the poisoned condition means you have disadvantage on attack rolls and ability checks for one minute here. Which shouldn't, yeah, unless, you're, again, you're going to try to immediately do something else with things on this table, it's not going to matter. And after a minute, the effects of this taste, that this again, this failed concoction that you've ingested fade. Shikara is going to keep an eye on him to see if he starts looking like he's feeling worse. Okay. You see on its cheeks two Niyogi eggs push through the flesh. <laughs> <laughs> I've been through worse. <laughs> I think we have seen everything down here. Shall we take care of the bodies we left and then leave? Go to Drakal like we are supposed to. Yes. Yes. Per- perhaps we should. Um... I, it is interesting. All of this apparel that seems to be intended for cold weather. I, I wonder if if she was herself going up and harvesting this snow bloom from the mountains. It would sort of seem that way. Somebody was. These look like cultist robes. It would explain how she got so much. Too bad this portal doesn't work. Probably would take us right there. It may. You may be yeah. right. There may have been a third portal uh, apart from in her cave under the water. I don't think we can stay long enough to figure out the magic word. The other thing is, when we get out of here, what if we run into more Niyogi? This, I mean, at least we're rested. Are you sure you're feeling okay, Falzer? Well, uh, I'm not... uh, I have felt better. What do you want from me? Do you want healing? If you're able, I would... I wouldn't object. Always dancing around with words. I'll uh, cure wounds on Falzer. 11 hit points. Thank you. Just out of curiosity, why don't you try the password that Isabella uses? All right. It probably won't work, but... Don't you I know will it? walk up to the uh, portal and say the password. Say the activation word. As you do, the stone within the frame again like begins to quake and break apart, turning, you know running into like this red glow and a a beam blasts into your chest. Can you make me a constitution saving throw, please? Jonathan, he knew! (laughs) I had a feeling that's what would happen too. What, constitution you said? Saving throw? Listeners, my mouth is agape. 17. 17 is a pass, just barely. You will take half damage. So you'll take 16 force damage. Hot dog. Mm. And the rock turns back to being solid and inactive. Oh, it's an anti-Izzy system. That Mm. did not work. I I had a feeling that would happen. Do you need healing? I am fine. Well, at least we know the door works if you have the right password. It's not dead. <sighs> what would Erica do? Hmm, what would Erica say? There is no telling. I'll walk over and grab up a bunch of cloaks that I pulled out of the first chest and start walking out the end. The, what the hell is the word for the hole in the wall? Hole in the wall. Tunnel? Tunnel? <laughs> say Tunnel. it really fast if you want it to be one word. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I follow Shikara carrying more. Can I say clothing. that properly, though, so that does not come across on the podcast? <laughs> oh, that's not going to get edited out, is it? Nope. Hold the wall. So you all go through the hole. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Sounds good. Now, we did not go south, take the south path here. Not right? yet, but that was the one that, again, was unlit further down. Mm-hmm. What are you thinking, Shaft? Well, maybe walk down a little bit just to see. We have spent much time down here as it is. Yeah, and look at all the cool stuff you just found. 
Think of all the cool ways that Coltus will kill you if you do not have the amulet when he arrives. Oh, that's, uh, I think we have plenty of time to get there. So you don't want to go down the path? Just a little way. Okay. Just want to walk down about five minutes and see if it opens up to anything. Okay. Or if it's very similar. Here, the it is incredibly steep for about the first 300, 400 feet. Again, like this dark tunnel. And then it kind of starts to level off a little and uh, descend uh, slightly, very, very slightly. Continuing another few hundred feet, you get to water. And again, that, that incline, or sorry, that decline, kind of stopping the water from coming all the way to the, the beginning of this tunnel, but it does look like this passageway is flooded. Oh dear. Do we, uh, do I get a sense that we've went up enough in this cave that we would be very close to, um, sort of the same surface level as if we were in the main chamber before, we would swim out and come back up into the lake? Would we, does this look like something you'd be able to have the same situation where the water is sort of in a, in a pocket would lead us out to, uh... I get where he's saying. You can roll me a survival check. Can I as well? Sure. Try to interpret. Well, I'm seven. Oh, seven eleven. Even though I've got a plus <laughs> nine, I'm rolling so bad tonight. <laughs> yeah, me too. So, so based, John, ba- or Shaft, based on your previous survival, I'm kind of trying to, to figure out the directions in which you're traveling here. I'll kind of roll the knowledge you gain there a little over. So you, you can tell that the the way you're traveling has been southward so no longer going back towards spices but still not progressing towards Drakal. and you have gained some significant elevation especially compared to where you started at the beginning of this this tunnel but as far as whether or not you think there there might be another dip coming up like that's that's really difficult to tell but there's certainly you've gained enough elevation where a similar formation at you know at the very bottom of the lake could be feasible. So uh, this might be another way out. If we go back to the main chamber, you know we're going to be swimming out through the underground tunnel and back up to where all that crap is in the water. Mm-hmm. Unless we can get back to the tunnel in which we came. 60 feet and already sort of in the water to get... I've got a flying broom. You... And more than likely, there's a tunnel that leads back up to where we were. Hmm. Just curious, I was wondering if you wanted to take a dip in the pool there, Falzern. What's the water? Is it, is it black? Again, you are you only have your dark vision to go off here. So, of course, it's yeah, it's going to look black. Could I uh, shoot a firebolt uh, towards the water to see if that illuminates it so I can tell if it's more of a blue or more of a black ooze. Absolutely, and you do reveal that it is the tainted waters. Hmm. Tainted waters. Well, I mean, I'm up, it's up to you guys. I'm up for trying whatever. I don't feel entirely comfortable swimming through this tainted water. I do not feel comfortable being in water over my head while wearing armor. Well, then let's go back to where the... Uh... The tunnel was that was that takes us back to where we came in. Makes sense to me. It's not like it was riddled with traps or anything like that. We just have to figure out how to get to that cliff we were at. Like, it's really high up. Yeah, but... the chul. We thought there was a tunnel that was that came, that busted out behind us when we were up there. Right, the chul. Yeah, the umberhawk. The umberhawk. Oh, the umberhawk. Oh, okay. Frick, I don't. <laughs> Sorry, the umberhawk. <laughs> So if we go back there, maybe that, that'll lead us up there. I'm going to walk back that way, and I'm going to take the cloaks with me, and I'm going to lay them over the dead bodies that we left there, and I'm going to light the cloaks on fire. Yeah, okay. I've got cloaks too, so I'll help her. Perfect. You can, you can add yeah. to this, this bonfire here and set them ablaze. Absolutely easily done. Okay, so do you want to go back to where you had seen that, that hole in the wall? Where yep. down at the dead end there? Okay, <laughs> absolutely. Yep. You do I find it looks like this was the, the burrowed passage that, that Umbergalk 
was making as it was trying to get to you all. And it leads to the bush tunnel. Oh, I thought you were going to say to an umbra hog. <laughs> <laughs> At least the whole family of umbra hogs. It's a nest. <laughs> okay. All right. Bush. I'm okay with bush. So you are able after about another hour or so <laughs> to get, find your way, you know, after you've set the fire. So you've been down it's here been for about two long. hours. But you oh, man. now get to the surface. And you see that uh, the two, the other village people, <laughs> the other other village people, the competing <laughs> YMCA village people. Macho, are, are, macho <laughs> men. The they're macho just kind of men. sitting down at the, the shoreline, you know, a ways away. But the, the barrels that were over by the overturned wagon, they seem like they have been emptied. And they've poured whatever contents was left in them back into the water. And, you know, drag, drag comes up. Oh, my goodness, you you were gone so for so long. There's yeah, it was, there a, was much exciting. that needed to be done. Drake, long story short, there's a hybrid form of neogi forming. They're instead of like spider eels, they're like crab eels. It's it's not good. We did what we could. We tried to control the damage and are being incubated inside people's chests. The villagers will warn them now. They're being taken under to the tunnels to be incubators for these eggs. That's, Where is the metal star? That's what I was going to say. They tell the, the remaining village people there. <laughs> Are you headed back? Uh, Pisces? Uh, yeah, I mean, we've, we've, we've emptied the barrels. Um, if you could help us get the wagon back on, on its wheels... We we can we can pull the, the the empties back to the city. Sure. Are, are the shores safe here? Should we stick closer to closer to Pisces? Yeah. So don't go near the water. I, I wouldn't yeah. trust the water. So the concoction that you're pouring into the the lake it's helping, right? Like you can see it from the surface, but deep below there's a lot of black tainted water. So if we can get heroes regular townspeople, someone brave enough to use this key and loose the dam, the water in the lake will be shallow once again in, in, the, in the river to Port Randis. Again, shallow waters, maybe the, the solution will have better effect. I, I, where is this, where's the, this dam? It's on the other side of the hill. I haven't follow, seen it myself. You see the, the cave opening, which I would assume you can still see the, the top of that cave that we saw a long time ago. On the other side of that, on the other side of the mountain, there's a dam that holds back the water. If you give this key to to uh, Campbell, tell him where to go, he should be able to take care of it. And tell him he will know the right time to use it. Exactly. Trusted people. I just think if we can spread the surface area of this water out, the solution may have a better effect, better concentration. The depth. I agree, Mia. I think that is probably our best shot at dealing with this. The people in Port Randis, although aware of the tainted water, need to be warned to stay away in the meantime. Maybe they could pitch in and help with the solution. Distribution. It seems they would, yeah, they, they, they'd probably want to handle the waters closest to them. Uh, please, please, you can help us with, with the wagon. We'll, we'll make sure... This all gets done. Sure thing. Go help them fix the wagon. And they start to pull away. The, the star key in the in the back empties, the, loaded back in. Uh, they've kind of discarded. They left the boats, uh, the one boat that was salvaged here. Uh, the other one is still kind of overturned, half submerged out in the, out in the water. And you're all free to, to mount up. I assume you want to get back on, on the journey. Before I go, I just want to remind Dragon Mullen and and Hulsa and say like, remember the Brightwoods have your back if you ever want if you ever want to be be fully healed. I, c- I can tell that you're already adapting, Drake. It's up to you. I I appreciate it, Mia. I, I think I would like to see Beric. All right, safe travels, friends. Tallyo. And that's our show. If you're not already, be sure to follow us at IncorrigiblePar on Twitter, IncorrigibleParty on Instagram and Facebook, 
And you can go to incorrigibleparty.com for world lore and PC information. And we've recently started adding some maps there as well. Incorrigible Party is generously sponsored and made possible by Critical Hit Design. For any of your design needs, visit criticalhitdesign.com. All ambient sound and music is provided by Tabletop Audio. And our intro and outro music was created by Josh Jarvis. You can reach him at jamesmercymusic at gmail.com. Happy adventuring!